Welcome back, viewers, to a second bonus video of Let's Play Revolt! If you've seen the first bonus video, you know what you're in for. If not, let me tell you. Basically, I'll be covering how to get the practice stars for the Silver Cup tracks, as well as weighing in on how I feel about the cars we have most recently unlocked. First off, though, let's find those practice stars! For Toy World 1, as soon as you start, do a U-turn and look up. You will see the star directly underneath the big ramp. Drive straight and go through the tunnel, exiting left once you get to the end. Keep going up the ramp, but try to go as slow as you can. Tip your car just over the top of the ramp and don't overshoot it like I did the first time, and you will get the star. For such a painful track, Ghost Town 1 star is extremely easy. Again, do an immediate U-turn. Go up the wood ramp and launch towards the star when you're about two-thirds of the way up. It may take a few tries, but the star will be yours. Toy World 2's star is the easiest to get of the trio, but also the most hidden. Keep going through the track as normal until you get to the junction where you can go either left or right. Take the right and slow down as you reach the ramp. Take a sharp left when you reach the tip of the ramp, looking out for the blue thing. It's very easy to fall over, but if you take it slow, you will scoop up the last silver cup star. Before I go on to the car analyses, I would like to share something that may be important. I have heard that transmission types for each car do factor into how well they handle. More specifically, that rear wheel drive makes cars easier to control on the road but harder off-road. This may explain my control issues during Ghost Town 1 last cup, since Aquasonic was a rear wheel drive car. Four wheel drive I think means balanced handling both on and off the road, but I have no information on what front wheel drive does. I will let you guys know if I figure this out for sure, but for now, those are the tidbits I have heard. Anyway, let's move on to the car analyses. Evil Weasel! The first car unlocked by completing the Silver Cup and the last car in Revolt to share RC Bandits' chassis, Evil Weasel presents himself as a balanced choice in his tier. Great top speed, good acceleration, and weight comparable to cars like Aquasonic and Dr. Grudge, means that he can overtake other cars in straightaways while hugging the turns and quickly recovering from obstacles. If there's one thing I don't like about this malevolent rodent, it's that he bounces off walls and explosive attacks a little harder than I would feel comfortable with. That being said, Evil Weasel is a good choice for taking on the twists and turns of the Gold Cup. Penga TC The other car unlocked by completing the Silver Cup, Penga TC continues the tradition of stock car style cars being very good thanks to having the highest top speed in the advanced tier, and great acceleration to match. That being said, I find that despite Penga TC being much heavier than most cars, he has very slippery handling and when he hits something, he hits it hard. Spinouts and or large airtime are to be expected if you get hit by a firework or a bomb. Furthermore, if my information about rear wheel drive having worse handling on off-road terrain is true, Penga TC may be a poor choice for tracks that don't have the smoothest roads. However, he's still a competent choice thanks to his very appealing stats, which makes it worth the risky driving. R6 Turbo! The most adorable car in the advanced tier, and also the lightest, R6 Turbo shows that yes, you can fit a gas engine into a 1x3x3cm RC car. The first car unlocked by obtaining all the practice stars for the silver rank tracks, R6 has the second best top speed, only slightly beaten out by Penga TC, and the best acceleration of the advanced tier cars, which is great because he will need it in order to recover from the many spinouts he'll receive. Being the lightest car in the game means that every rocket, every bomb, and every collision will cause your car to flip over. Very careful driving, even more so than lightweight Sprinter XL and RC San, is required to get the most out of R6 Turbo. Keeping control of this little menace means that you will have mastered one of the most versatile cars in the game. NY54 NY54 is our other stock car of the advanced tier, and also unlocked by collecting all the practice stars in the silver rank tracks. I'm not entirely sure what his name means, but I do know that he has the second lowest top speed of the advanced tier by a slight margin, medium low acceleration, but also has a higher weight rating than most of the other cars of this tier. This makes him much more controllable. You could say this car is balanced for the most part, as the acceleration is just enough to get you back up to speed should you get hit by something, and the better handling is welcome after playing Lightweight's R6 Turbo and Tanga TC. 
Personally, I don't like them too much, but that's just because I prefer high acceleration for the most part. NY54 is an okay pick, but he feels like an, an average car in a pack of cars that each have their one outstanding quality. Bertha Ballistics! This big, mean, tan machine is unlocked by beating all the silver rank tracks in single race, which I have once again done off screen. Bertha Ballistics secures herself as the heaviest car in the game, while outshining many of her peers with excellent top speed and acceleration. Granted, the big BB's top speed and acceleration are noticeably lower than Tiny Speedster R6 Turbo, but her ridiculous weight means she won't be thrown around by puny explosives. Furthermore, her great weight means very tight handling. Although sometimes she has this similar problem to Mouse where not turning hard enough may mean you slam against a wall. Lastly, I've noticed that she tends to dip nose first when catching air, so be careful about doing big jumps. However, these are small things to worry about compared to BB's overall outstanding stats. If you want a heavyweight that also has the muscle to challenge the speediest opponents, Birth of Ballistics is your car. That's it for this week's bonus episode. Next week, we will challenge the Gold Cup. This will be another four-track cup that features both some new themes and the return of some old ones. Also, I'll be giving some tips on how to drive decently in Revolt. Until next time, viewers.